Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, President of the Euro Chamber, representatives of the Singapore government and of the diplomatic community. It is a great pleasure for me to address you today, albeit from a great distance. I would like to start by thanking the European Chamber of Commerce for this invitation and for its valuable work with the European business community in Singapore. Today's event shows that you are not only promoting closer economic relations between Singapore and the European Union, but also fostering sustainable businesses. And that is far-sighted and wise. The European Union and Singapore may be far apart, but we are close partners. When the coronavirus crisis hit us all, our free trade agreement was our anchor. During the pandemic, total trade between Singapore and the European Union only decreased by 4%. And exports from Singapore to the European Union even increased by 24%. This is really amazing. And this shows the full potential and power of global cooperation. We are also united in our efforts to look after our planet. Our free trade agreement is the first trade deal with a sustainable development chapter. For instance, the deal incentivizes companies to use natural resources sustainably, preserving rather than destroying our environment. So Europe and Singapore are walking in parallel on the path towards a greener economy. This comes at a crucial moment in time. Over the next two years, governments around the world will seek to spend around 10 trillion euros to finance the economic recovery. But this time, it must be a green recovery. After the financial crisis of 2008, global CO2 emissions reached a new high. This recovery was fully fueled with carbon-heavy investment. Today, the world simply cannot afford to make the same mistake. A green recovery is good for our planet and for our economies. And this time, Europe is determined to do things differently. The European Green Deal creates thousands of new opportunities. Science tells us that every million euros invested in clean energy creates three times more jobs compared to investment in fossil fuel powered energy. So this is the moment to make a very clear choice for sustainable and clean investment. During the summer, I have proposed a European recovery fund called Next Generation EU. It is worth 750 billion euros. 37% of Next Generation EU will be spent directly on climate action. So let me give you a few examples about how we intend to do this. First, we will launch a renovation wave for our buildings, similar to Singapore's Green Towns plan. We want to make our buildings more energy efficient and we want them to become carbon sinks using organic building materials like, for example, wood and smart technologies powered by artificial intelligence. With Next Generation EU, we can make Europe's buildings less wasteful, less expensive and more sustainable. Second, we will invest in clean hydrogen. Hydrogen is a perfect alternative to fossil fuels for heavy industry. Clean hydrogen must not only be produced, but transported, stocked 
and it has to become part of industrial processes. So next generation EU will invest specifically in this systemic transformation. Third, we will finance one million electric charging points across our continent. These are investments in green infrastructure that accelerate change in the mobility sector. So next generation EU has the potential to create new markets for clean products and for sustainable products. The European Green Deal is our ambitious plan for a more sustainable future. And at the same time, it is Europe's new growth strategy. The fact that the European Union will lead the way will also create opportunities for our partners and sustainable businesses worldwide. Just look, for example, at green financing. 30% of next generation EU will be raised on capital markets through green bonds. So international investors will know that if they invest in Europe, they invest in our planet's health. As well as in the competitiveness of our economy and the health of our society. So you are all invited to join. The recovery has to be sustainable for the next generations. But let me be clear. None of us can fight climate change alone. We can only do this together. 2021 should be the year when the whole world agrees on more ambitious targets, for example, at COP26 in Glasgow. Next month, I hope that Europe's leaders will agree on our proposal to reduce EU greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. So this will then become our new commitment under the Paris Agreement. As like-minded partners, Singapore and the European Union can lead the way. Together we can try to inspire our partners around the world. And we see that change is already happening. In recent weeks, important economies such as China, Japan, South Africa and South Korea, they have announced some big steps forward. So this shows that together we can build a global movement for climate action and an innovative, climate-friendly economy. Singapore and Europe together with other ASEAN countries, can contribute in building high ambition coalitions. Together we get all of us closer to our shared goal. This is a task for governments, of course. But businesses also have a central role to play in this. And today's awards show that companies across Europe and Asia are already exploring innovative solutions. So let me congratulate the winners in all five categories. Circular economy, smart mobility, clean and efficient energy, sustainable food and nutrition, and green finance. You are front runners. You have understood that a greener and more prosperous future is possible. You are showing that together we can make a difference. Thank you.